वन टू थ्री फ्रॉम आवर फैमिली टू योर हैप्पी कैनेडा डे ओके नो दैरबल सो ऑफल Adventures. I'm Karen Ahmed, and this is a really special episode. We're celebrating Canada's 150th birthday. Yay! Give it up for Canada. To celebrate this amazing occasion, I put out a contest, and I asked you guys, "What should I make to commemorate this very special occasion?" And I had some amazing feedback. Everything from Nanaimo bars to poutine. I picked a winner by random draw. And the winner is Sam Simi from Thornhill, Ontario. Congratulations! For the recipe today, I picked an old Canadian beloved classic, the beaver tail. Everybody loves beaver tails. I decided to make my own version. Now at work, we have a beaver tails right by my office and I often go there with my coworkers to try out these delicious snacks. But I don't have a beaver tail by my house, so I decided to commemorate this birthday, we're going to be making an assortment of delicious Canadian beaver tails. Now, I know you're dying to know how to make this yourself, but before we go any further, Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. I upload new videos every week. Also, make sure to ring the bell. That's YouTube's new bell icon. That will ensure that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Now, let's get started. Everything fluffy and delicious starts with some yeast. In the bottom of my stand mixer bowl, I'm going to add two and a half teaspoons of quick rice yeast. I love storing this kind of yeast in my fridge as it keeps forever. and it's always on hand to make a quick leaven dough. Next, I'm going to add a quarter cup of warm water and I'm also going to feed the yeast and help it bloom by adding a pinch of sugar. Now, I'm just going to leave this alone for about 10 minutes till it gets really nice and frothy. After about 10 minutes, you can see this is already nice and frothy. and i'm going to add the rest of the liquid ingredients i've got a half cup of warm milk 9 teaspoons of sugar 1 teaspoon of salt 1 teaspoon of vanilla essence one whole egg and about 25 ml of oil now i'm just going to give this a quick whisk because i want to incorporate all the ingredients well and then i'm going to set my bowl on my stand mixer to receive the rest of the dry ingredients. I've got 2 and 1/2 cups of pre-sifted whole wheat flour here. Now there are many recipes out there that just call for regular all-purpose flour, but let me tell you, the authentic beaver tail is made from a whole wheat pastry. In fact, when they stretch them out of the store, you can actually see the flecks of wheat in the dough. Now I'm going to add the flour 1 tablespoon at a time. Make sure to periodically scrape the bottom of the bowl. Depending on the liquid ingredients and the temperature of your kitchen, you may need to add a little bit less or more flour. This dough looks a little bit sticky, so I'm just going to add a little bit more flour. And I like to finish this off by kneading it by hand. This way I just get a feel for the dough and I know if there's any dry spots in the dough. Now 
If it feels a bit sticky, add a bit more flour and knead till it's nice and soft. Now I have an oil bowl here ready and I'm going to transfer the dough into my bowl and I'm just going to toss it around so it gets coated with the oil. I'm now going to cover this with cling film. Now what this is going to do, it's going to keep the air out but it's also going to keep the heat in. I'm also going to cover it with a tea towel and I'm just going to move it to the warmest spot in my kitchen. I'm going to leave this for one to two hours. The dough has now doubled and if you poke holes at it, you'll see that it's going to just bounce back. Let me just give this a really good knead again and bring this to a smooth ball. As you knead it, it does get sticky, so keep a little bit of extra flour handy. Now I'm just going to cut my dough in half then quarters and I'm going to take each quarter and I'm going to cut it in half again. So you get eight portions. Now using my hands and just a little bit of extra flour to prevent them from sticking to the board, I'm going to flatten these out into oblong shapes. I have a pot of oil heating. At beaver tails, they have a huge bath of hot oil and they only fry their beaver tails to order to ensure that it's as fresh as it can be. Drop in a piece of dough just to make sure that the oil is hot enough. Now, you may be wondering why I'm not rolling these beaver tails. It's because beaver tails are never rolled. Instead, they are manually stretched out by using fingers of each hand and swirling the dough in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. I'm showing this to you horizontally for the camera, but the best way is to hold it vertically and allow the force of gravity to stretch the dough as you twirl it. Once you have it stretched out in the hot oil it goes, let it brown on one side, flip it over with some tongs and then cook the other side. Remove it and drain it on some paper towels. I've watched with great fascination as the staff deftly massage the dough into beaver tail. I'm not sure why they don't roll it, but I'm guessing that one, rolled dough would be too flat, and two, you would use extra flour to roll, making the beaver tail way too dry. I'm going to keep doing this until I've cooked all eight beaver tails. When it comes to toppings, the world is your oyster. Here are some ideas for you. The classic cinnamon sugar, chocolate and hazelnut spread, peanut butter topped with more peanuts, fruit jam, the old Canadian maple syrup and bananas, caramel and peanut, salted caramel and green apple, and another Canadian classic, Nanaimo bar, melted chocolate, coconut flakes, and a custard drizzle. And here they are in all their glory. If you can't get to a beaver tails, they will come to you. Thank you so much for joining me on Cravings with Adventures. I really hope you enjoyed this delicious recipe for Canadian beaver tails that you can make in your own home. And as you can see, it's highly customizable. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. I upload new amazing videos every week. So make sure that you're subscribed. Share my channel with your family and friends. I hope to reach 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so make sure that you're subscribed and you will help me get there. Also, ring the bell, that's YouTube's new bell icon, that will ensure you're notified every time I upload a new video. Also, follow me on all of my social channels. I upload a ton of behind the scenes there. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and even Snapchat. From our family to yours, have